Maserati is busy overhauling its entire lineup, and they started with a Halo supercar, the MC20, a carbon fiber tub, mid-engine rocket ship with butterfly doors and gorgeous styling. And as follows the typical supercar life cycle, you then release a convertible version of it. So we have this, the MC20 Cielo, which means sky in Italian. So this is the convertible spider version of the MC20 supercar. If beautiful styling was the only requirement for a supercar to be successful, this would already have won because just look at it. It is just beautiful. Powertrain in the MC20 is also extremely unique. It is a three liter twin turbo V6 they call Natuno. It's a 90 degree V6, so it's not related to the three liter twin turbo V6 found in the Ferrari 296. That is a 120 degree arrangement, so they're very different feeling too. But this has some pretty impressive technology. It makes 621 horsepower and 538 pound feet of torque, and it features Maserati twin combustion technology, which is Formula One drive. So essentially, it has a passive pre combustion chamber with its own spark plug, which leads to faster combustion, it's more efficient, and it does make more power. They say without this fancy system, this engine would probably be good for around 500 horsepower, so it makes quite a big difference. And you get to say, your Maserati supercar has Formula One tech, which is always a nice bragging point. It's very, very different feeling from the Ferrari 296 twin turbo V6, which we'll talk about when we are driving the car. This engine is also making its way, the Natuno V6, into other vehicles in the Maserati lineup. The Trofeo versions of the Gracali, the Gran Turismo, also get a detuned version of this, but in the MC20, it is the most potent, most powerful. It's eight-speed dual-clutch transmission, rear-wheel drive only. Maserati claims zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds for the convertible to a top speed of just over 200 miles an hour. In terms of exterior styling, this car is just absolutely beautiful. It is definitely, I think, one of the prettiest supercars to come out within the last 10 years. Very clearly a mid-engine layout. It's got the carbon tub and the butterfly doors. Doors that go up are just fun, right? It adds to the drama, the whole supercar experience. When you open a door, you see all the forged carbon too. It's got a lot of carbon fiber on this thing. The front splitter, the side skirts, the entire rear fascia, and the paint. This paint is special to the Cielo for the launch of the convertible, and it is unbelievable. It's actually a three-stage paint, ton of pearl flake to it. The base is actually a gray, and they layer it on all this aqua teal pearl to it. It changes depending on the lighting, what angle you're looking at it. It is such a complex finish to it, and it is absolutely amazing. It's gotten a ton of attention and compliments while I've had the car this week. And then you have some other typical Maserati styling cues. Look at the shape of the grille up front with the Trident, obviously. It really reminds you of the MC12 front grille, the previous Gran Turismo. Other styling cues like the headlight shape, that is now trickling to the rest of the line of the refreshed new Gran Turismo, the Gracali. Some of the other styling cues had to change a bit, right? You know, on some modern Maseratis, actually, I think most of them, they had those three vents on the side. Well, this is mid-engine, so that wouldn't really make much sense. Instead, they echoed it here on the side of the door behind the MC20 badge. You have these three little segments. On the uh, cover here, on the flying buttress for the convertible top, we've got three of these indents. This is a folding hardtop, so this hardtop goes back here. You can't see the engine anymore because it's the whole convertible mechanism, but they've got these twin flying buttresses, folds up, the roof goes back in there. I mentioned it has tons of carbon fiber. Just, it looks so good. Nothing over the top complicated. It doesn't need a giant wing. It's just clean, beautiful design. With that, let's hop inside, take it for a drive, talk about the interior, have some fun on these canyon roads and show you guys what it's like to drive, and lastly, talk about the value. All right, on the road now in the MC20 Cielo. Let's talk about the interior first. So, it's relatively minimalistic. We have some tech. We have a 10.25 inch digital cluster here, a 10.25 inch touchscreen. The thing is, there aren't many physical buttons or toggles or anything. 
we have the drive manual button here, reverse button, window switches, lock on lock, and a little power knob thing, but everything else is all through the touchscreen. So we're talking your climate settings, controlling the convertible top, anything, right, is all through the touchscreen. I don't love that aspect of it, especially like your climate settings. You gotta go through the touchscreen. Like anything has to be at least a tap of the touchscreen. The steering wheel does have a couple buttons on it, like the front lift button, that is very convenient. Start stop button is here. There's a launch control button, volume, and then materials are pretty nice too. So leather, suede, carbon fiber. This one has a interior carbon fiber pack. So steering wheel, center area here. Uh, the big fixed paddle shifters are quite nice finished in matte carbon fiber. And then we have the drive selector dial, which has been updated from the coupe. On the coupe, when this came out, it was just analog. Now it's got a little touch screen in it. So you still rotate the outer ring. So if I go back down into GT, it updates. But if I go right, I can go to sport. There's also Corsa and there's a wet. And then if you swipe left across it, you can adjust your dampers independently. So within each drive mode, there's like a two stage damper setup. So in sport, you go from soft or mid and of course it like steps up the aggressiveness. We'll leave it in sport, mid, everything defaults to GT when you first get in the car. Because the butterfly doors go up, there is no storage in the door panels themselves. There's a little electronic push button uh, for opening the doors as they swing up. Storage is not, super plentiful in here it's got a very tiny center console there is a wireless phone charger up there but there is no like parcel shelf or anything like that so it's not super practical in that regard but what is cool is this roof so it's electric like changing opacity right so right now it's in opaque but if i touch the cello button it goes to translucent instantly but again there's no button for that you have to actually go through the touchscreen which is a little bit annoying sometimes, but that's pretty cool. Same thing, putting the convertible top down all through this touch screen. But what we really wanna know is what is this thing like to drive? Well, this powertrain is potent. You know how sometimes manufacturers try to hide the fact that their engine is turbocharged, right? They talk about how it feels like it's naturally aspirated, how linear it is. Well, Maserati didn't do that. They embraced the turbocharging. Just from the noises, I swear the boost noises are as loud as the exhaust itself. You hear it like right back there behind your ear. <laughs> the sound of just air and boost and the blow off valve noises. It is such a cool characteristic. The engine itself has a very low tone to it. It makes very solid power. It's not the most like charismatic, exciting. Like it feels nothing at all like the Ferrari 296 V6, but it is also still really, really fast. The Ferrari 296 V6 does feel like a baby V12. They call it the Piccolo V12, total different personality. But I mean, the MC20, this thing, that engine makes, makes it an exciting, exhilar exhilarating experience. Woo! Man, I love the noises, the turbo noises. Carbon ceramic brakes are option on this one. They take a bit to get used to when you're driving just around town normally. The pedal doesn't give you a ton of like travel and feedback, but they definitely haul the car down quite nicely. And over the course of my week with the car, I've been playing with all the different drive modes. GT and soft is pretty good when you're just commuting on the freeway. I found my favorite was sport with the dampers in soft if you weren't on perfectly fine roads and then put it in manual mode, which this dual clutch does let you control the gears. It'll let you go up to red line, pretty quick shifts, doesn't upset the car at all. And this car is, you gotta respect it, it's a handful. It's like the old school exhilarating exciting. Like <laughs> I was getting on the freeway last night after going to the gym and just in second gear, I'm doing like a pull onto the freeway. And in the middle of second gear, the rear tires broke loose. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I've heard that from many other people who've driven this car. Like it is properly exciting in a way that some other supercars in the segment have not been able to achieve. 
There's ones with more power, but this brings the excitement, a little bit of the scary factor. I think it's a handful. <laughs> with the carbon tub and once the tires are sticky, there's a lot of gravel and little rocks on the roads right now around LA. You hear everything hitting the car and it adds to the whole experience. It's kind of like driving like a, a track special car, like the McLaren LT, but this is not that. This is a car with an inter interesting personality because it is a supercar, right? I mean, look at it, look at the power numbers, the performance and everything, but it also kind of blends the line with like a grand touring car. So it's, it's kind of a mix, a pull of both worlds. Makes it very, very unique and hard to directly compare to some of the other cars out there. Whoa. Honestly, it makes, whoa, <laughs> honestly, it makes such solid torque that you don't have to run it all the way out to red line. I'm actually pretty happy in the middle of the rev range. We are in the convertible and today's weather cleared up. So I think we should put the top down. So you go to the touchscreen. There is a shortcut and I believe we hold this one. You can do it up to 31 miles an hour. There you go. Windows are going to drop and the folding hard top will go 12 seconds up or down up to 31 miles an hour. Rooftop opening. There we go. Open and latched. With the top down, now you really hear the turbo noises. The convertible is slightly heavier than the coupe just probably from the, the roof mechanism and things like that, but it's a carbon tub car. So they didn't have to do a ton of like extra structural rigidity or bracing to maintain that stiffness. That is one of the big benefits of having a carbon tub. Maserati says they designed this with the coupe, convertible and future electric versions in mind. But it's, uh, I think they said 65 kilograms, which is 143 pounds heavier. And the cello is supposed to be a little bit softer version than the coupe so different rear springs a bit of the damper tuning but i think that's actually a good thing i heard i haven't driven a coupe actually i'm getting my first experience with the cielo here the convertible that the coupe was almost a little too hardcore like too much for the street this has been a very very nice balance this is such a fun car It is fast. That is that is an absolute fact for sure. Like plenty, plenty quick. And just really boosty, right? It just it's part of the personality. Like almost old school in the way where you got nothing, 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 and the turbo's kicking, you're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> This is a fantastic road too. I can now see why I had a, actually multiple friends say this is the one car that while driving their like activity tracker, whether like a smartwatch or whatever, told them you were exercising. This gets your heart rate up and running. And that's what a supercar should do. It's gotta get you just so excited. This car leaves me with a bit of a dilemma because I absolutely love the styling. It is just so alluring from every angle. Absolutely beautiful car and so many different specs. The engine is, is good. It, it brings the excitement, not the charisma that like a, a Porsche flat six and a GT3 would or a Huracan B10 or the 296 V6 is an amazing powertrain too. But it's missing some other things like the interior doesn't suit the price tag to me yeah the materials are nice it it has the stuff but like the touch screen's a little fiddly i don't i don't love that even like dropping the convertible top you got to go through the touch screen and hold that i don't love that it's not very practical in terms of storage it's 
decently comfortable. I got stuck in two hours of traffic in LA and it was, it was all right. Uh, I'd rather be in like a proper GT car, right? So it's still a carbon tub supercar, but then it's not as hardcore as like a McLaren 600 LT would be. What does this compete with? What does this actually compete with? From a price standpoint, value, we gotta talk about the value. This is expensive. The Cielo version starts at 200, call it right on $250,000. It's like 50,000 more than the coupe. And when you option it up like this one, Guys, this one's stickered for $340,000 because it has over 50 grand in carbon fiber. It's got like a $39,000 exterior carbon pack, the rear wing in carbon, that lip back there is 5,500. It's got like 7K in interior carbon. It's got $10,000 carbon ceramic brakes. So you get up to 340 grand, that's a lot. And if you look at the competitors, it's an interesting subset, right? When the coupe came out, you could say Huracan like Tectica, but that's no longer being made anymore. Huracan's being phased out with the V10, but it was comparable, kind of mid two to high 200s price point. Some of those Lambos now get into the 300s too. Um, with the V10, right, it was 631 horsepower, I think, but it's a V10, right? V10 is, that's, that's properly special. The Ferrari is a weird one. The F8 isn't, I mean, is it being phased out? Is it not being phased out? The 296 is way more expensive so that's not really fair to compete against that it's also significantly more powerful whole different segment of car i think um aroma but but this is much more supercar than aroma aroma is more a grand tour uh mclaren artura i think is the closest competitor they just launched the artura spider that thing is a carbon tub mid-engine supercar v6 hybrid but similar ish power levels a bit more I believe that was 671 then it just released an update where you get 19 more horsepower so 690 horsepower but close price point to what else would you be cross shopping this way so and we're talking just like trying to look at new options you see where it's like it's interesting because it doesn't stack up exactly to one of those other competitors Artur I still think is the closest it's got its own kind of unique trait but that's kind of in the Maserati way, right? It's always just, sure, this is what everybody else is doing, but ours is gonna be the more unique choice. You buy this because you want something with a bit more flair. You want the styling, the, the heritage or something with the Maserati. I felt the same way driving the Gracali Trofeo. I was like, well, an X5M or a Cayenne Turbo makes a lot more sense, right? It's 20 grand cheaper, but there's something alluring about being in a Maserati. The Trident helps. Staring at the Trident is always fun. <laughs> The steering also, I forgot to mention, I really like the steering on this car. I was super surprised. The first time I got into sport mode on a nice curvy run, I went, whoa, super quick, nimble steering, like almost Porsche-like, right? I always seem to like to use Porsche as the standard because I love Porsche GT cars, but the steering on the MC20, big fan. Hear the carbon ceramic brakes squeaking a little bit. Woo. Top down, sunny, beautiful weather. Gorgeous, fast supercar. Amazing curvy road. The view out is absolutely amazing. This is, this is a good day. So final thoughts on the MC20 Cielo. This is a really, really attractive option. I am struggling a bit with the price point, especially how this one is optioned, $340,000. I would probably skip all the carbon fiber on the outside. I mean, that saves you $50,000 right there. And I could already see the comments. Everybody's like, just wait for it to depreciate. It'll be half the price and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, supercars, high-end cars do that, right? Go look at a Bentley. You can get one for half the price. Look at what McLarens do. They, they depreciate. So that's just a fact of life. But at, I think between 150 to 200, obviously used, right? This is just like, Oh my gosh, yeah, I think I think it's enough to make me want to own one. 
there are a lot of options in that space. You can get a used McLaren, you got a used Ferrari, Lamborghinis. But this is... <laughs> this is the, I think, the scariest out of all of them. <laughs> Just in the way the power is delivered. I think this gets my heart rate the most elevated when I'm driving it on a canyon road like this. In typical Maserati fashion, it gives you so many things to love, so many things that are good about it, and then a couple random things you're like, but why? Why is everything through the touchscreen? Why is there no storage? Why does it cost $340,000? But then you look at it, and you take it for a drive, you're like, yeah, but I, I, I want one. I just look so good in the garage. Hope you enjoyed this review of the MC20 Cielo. Woohoo! I'm gonna spend the rest of today and probably the rest of this tank of gas having fun here in the canyons. <laughs> uh, as you can tell by my reaction as I'm trying to get sentences out, this thing is epic doing this type of stuff. Man. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. Check out my Living With Vlog, more informal behind the scenes, a week spent with the car. Thanks for watching.